back, everybody. It's part two, starting season seven of Dog Turds into Diamonds, here with AFC Russian and Diamonds in the Vanarama National League. We go away to our, our, in my mind, big rivals, our nemesis, Gloucester City, who have come down from League Two. Uh, but you know what? I'm excited for the new season. Like I said in part one, I think this is the strongest side strongest squad we've ever had even with the financial limitations that we've got um pre-season has gone really well the new signings have looked really good the team's been playing good football i'm i'm really optimistic right now i really do feel like our aim for this season has to be at the very least making the playoffs uh, I, I think we look that much better than the previous two seasons uh before we get into this let's have a quick look at gloucester uh, I looked at them earlier uh, or last season when we uh, bought in Butroid on loan from Gloucester as our left back in January. They were 15th in League Two and they've ended up being relegated. So I was really surprised by that. And um, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that once they went up. Sorry, let's go to trans. Where are their transfers? There we are. When they went up. After winning the Vanarama National League North and winning the Vanarama National League, um, they seem to have lost an awful lot of players. You can see here that after they went up, they moved on John Lucero. We had Lewis Butroid. They moved on Wayne Wilding to Scunthorpe. Um, but um, they, uh, they also, I think they had players going out of contract because there's some players that I know they lost that are not listed here. Um, they, um, they, they also had a Brazilian left back, I seem to remember, that we offered a contract to this summer. But he was another one of those players that ended up going elsewhere. I think he went to Notts County, which is a real shame because he was a phenomenal left back. And their team kind of looks very different now. Um, they do still have Chanka Zimba, who was absolutely incredible for them in non-league now he doesn't have the best finish in there but he's a great athlete mentally superb great dribbling and first touch he was just an absolute uh, an absolute beast for them in the non-league look 21 in 36 in the vanarama north 28 in 39 in the vanarama national league and he then just didn't quite cut it in league two did he but he is going to be a real dangerous player still this season and he's got to be one of the favorites to be top scorer in the league now they did also have an incredible center back who i believe is this one jonathan dinzei um look at him he's awesome he is better than any center back i've got and he's on their bench um i mean he is just he is just football league level absolutely no doubt about it would I've, I've got him on my short list. I would love to have him at our team. But um, yeah, I I think he'll be in the team when this game starts. I don't think it's going to be Lawrence and Knight Level. I think um, if he's not in the team, I'll be shocked. They will be incredible at the back if he is not good enough to get a game. But elsewhere, they look weaker than before. Tomlinson on the left wing looks really good at dribbling. Good first touch. You can see gaps in his game here with his stamina and his jumping reach, his strength, his finishing, his long shots. So maybe not quite the quality that they've had when they were last in the National League. And Scanlon on the right, if Jordan Scanlon is going to start, again, he looks pretty average from what we can see of him. Um, in midfield, McNally, again, looks all right. Doesn't look at anything absolutely incredible, but... Yeah, pretty good for a 17-year-old. Let's get scouting him. Um, pretty good for a 17-year-old. But again, is he going to be next level to dominate this league like they did previously? And Liam Thompson looks pretty average. So um, I'm sort of quite happy. Why have they? Why has Liam Thompson played Carabao Cup? What If they've come down from League 2, why on earth is he playing Carabao Cup this season? That's very odd. Um Maybe maybe they signed him from another club that uh, that was playing Par Carabao Cup. Um, yeah, Alex Perry, defensive midfielder. His tackling doesn't look great, does it, for a, ta for an, a defensive midfielder? Mentally, what we can see doesn't look great. So I don't think they're going to be the 
all-conquering team that they were before. So um, reason for optimism maybe. Let's get into our tactical meeting here and uh, see if we can get the players prepared and G'd up for a really good start to the season. Um, why does our assistant want much shorter passing? Believe the opponent are likely to concede chance against a shorter... Well, we'll bear that in mind. We'll bear that in mind. We're playing fairly short passing anyway, so we'll bear that in mind as things go on. Um, maybe we knock it down even a little bit more. But this is the team to start the opening game of the season. Tommy Reed is going to start in goal. Uh, Josh Staunton, the captain, is going to start right back. To be honest, I have been going with uh, Sam Ling at right back through pre-season. But I'm just going to give the captain the chance to start the season for this game. He's maybe uh, more like a centre-back. Maybe that's a good solid idea for an away game against the team that was in League 2 last season. Martinez and Wilson are the defensive pair and I think they're going to be fantastic. And David Totonda is our left back to start the season. So it's four of the uh, back five are new signings to start this first game. Or Scott Wilson, he's a new signing, but of course he was here from January last season on loan. Agyapong and Sheringham are our central midfielders. I think they're going to be fantastic, the two 18-year-olds. Um, Liam Gibbs is our number 10, the vice captain. Fran Hodgin on the left wing as an inside forward. I think he's going to be great. I think you're going to love him. And I'm starting with Duffus, partnering James Price up front. And we're playing with that formation we started with last season where we got two strikers playing the ball out to the left, looking to get service into these two strikers. But with the idea that when we don't have the ball, Duffus is just going to go out and mark the left back um, as, a, as a traditional left winger. So it's a, a 4-2-2-2 two, two with the ball but more a traditional 4-2-3-1 without the ball. On the bench, Lamil Sharif, uh, Jordan Sparks, Jack Sparks. I always get my first names mixed up. Came in last season. He's a good option as a left winger and as a left back. So um, a, a good bit of versatility with him in the squad. Um, let's just go back. Um Mikhail starts on the bench. Marinos Mikhail, I think he's going to be a big star for us. He can come in as a number 10, as a central midfielder, or as a, an inside forward on the right. Thomas Hughes, he can play number 10. He can play left wing. Uh, he is now our longest serving player in the squad. Uh, a true legend. And George Lloyd, our striker, who we are trying to move on, he is going to be uh, a great option to come off the bench. Last season's player of the season. Uh, not in the squad. We've still got uh, Gabadebo, who I would have got rid of. But the fact that we uh, were constrained in the transfer market and uh, he is still a half-decent centre-back for this level. He's stuck around. He's another one that if we want to move on, we can get some major wages off the books. If we're doing all right, and I don't think I need him, he could be one that gets released, as could Sam Cornish. Um, Ngoma, our new loan sign-in, is also not in the squad for today, nor is Colwell. And Magasuba, who I'm expecting to get game time as I left back over the course of this season, also doesn't get in. He played for the youth team today, as did Gary Roberts, who had some uh, games last season. And Almy Beckger, the ex-Chelsea man, um, still a, a good squad option the 19-year-old as a striker or as an inside forward on the right. So that's kind of the, the makeup of the squad. Let's get into this. Let's see how we uh, how we get on today. Let's set up our marking. I just think um, so much to be excited about with this new squad. I think there's a really fresh, there's a real fresh youthful exuberance to the squad. Um, I think... At the start of the season, at least, I can be optimistic and uh, and excited about what this squad might be able to achieve. Um, we'll do the team talk in just a second. Let's just set up some marking responsibilities. So Duffus is going to mark their left back, um, Andy Davies. And with them playing uh, a 4-3-3 with a defensive midfielder, 
it means I don't have to worry about marking anybody in this area here. Martinez is going to mark Chanka Zimba. I think we need to give him special attention. And I'm going to get Hodgin just tracking their right back as well. So those are the specific marking duties I'm going to hand out for today. Let's see how things go. Um, the pressure's all on them. Go out and cause an upset. I think that's a good one. Nobody really reacts, but we've got a lot of new players, so they've still not got that confidence in us to really react to the first shout on the team talks. But there you go. We've got a half-decent reaction for them from them. Let's go out there, and I think um, Gloucester will be fancying their chances here, having dominated us in previous seasons. But I think maybe we've got a little, a little bit of a surprise we can give to them. It's been a slow start. We've had a couple of shots already, look. We've had a little bit more possession than them. Nothing really significant. And 15 minutes in, there's no highlights. But the chance have come for us. But they get the first highlight. And Chanka Zimba scores with the first highlight of the season. How frustrating is that? We've started well with more possession. A couple of shots at goal. And Chanka Zimba just gets free at the back post. Nobody went with him. And let's see if the players can react here. Let's go on to an attacking mentality. And it has now turned into a much more even game. Let's demand more. Again, no, hardly any shots since the goal. They've had one shot, I think, since the goal. They've had another one there. But this is a really cagey closed game. And we have probably got to make some changes because we're not... Yeah, they've kind of taken control of the shots now that's got to go down as a good start and then a disappointing performance um let's tell them i want a much better display in the second half fortunately they've reacted to that fran hodgin has been really really poor now what do i want to do here i'm going to get our left back on overlaps i'm going to ask them to shoot on sight and hit earlier crosses and i'm going to ask them to be more expressive as well um I think I want to keep everything there in transition, and uh, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave it at, at that at the moment. So not making too many major changes, but we need a really good reaction from the team here to start the second half. First highlight for us in the game: Sheringham getting a crossing, but that's really poor. And they are now obviously going to get the chance to turn this highlight into an attacking opportunity. Zimba gets the header, but there's no one there to pick up on the, the second ball. And hopefully we can now make some... No, we cannot. Martinez getting caught in possession. And Chanka Zimba gets a tap in. It's an awful mistake from Martinez on his debut. Look at this. He has all the time in the world to pick out a pass. We're meant to be playing out to the wings as well. So he didn't even need to look forward through the middle there and that is an awful goal to concede oh this is a frustrating one isn't it i thought we might have a chance of an upset to start the season here we've been so good in pre-season james price now poor shot and it's our first shot of the game in terms of highlights really disappointing and we've got a long way back in this game now. We haven't created anything of note. That's headed away. We've still got hold of the ball here. To Tonda. We'll get another cross in. And Doofus heads over. Yeah, I'll, I'll call him Doofus when he miss, misses chances like that. We've got to do much better here. I mean, you look at the stats and it actually says it's been an even, even game. But we have not done a good enough job. Let's make some changes here on the half hour. Fran Hodgin, he hasn't had a good debut. Let's get Thomas Hughes on. I'll keep him as an inside forward there. Um, what other options do we have? Let's get... Uh, how has Gibbs played? Gibbs has not played badly. Agyapong has been poor. I'm going to get Mikhail in here. And I'm going to ask him to be a deep line playmaker on support so we've got two playmakers on the field 
Um, don't know how much of that is going to work. But um, yeah, I'm going to bring off Duffus. Or do you know what? Do I keep Duffus on the pitch and hold George Lloyd back as maybe a late attacking option if I want to just go for it in the last 10 minutes? Let's keep it as it is for the moment with just those two changes. Let's see if they can kind of get us back into the game. I can't give any more shouts at the moment. Let's just let's play with a little bit more width as well. Just nothing has really worked today, has it? Frustrating start to the season. Um, all right, let's make one more change here. Uh, Gibbs is very tired. Do I take him off? I think I'm going to take Gibbs off to make sure he's all right for the next game. And I'm going to put George Lloyd in here as... Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, I'll leave him as a deep line forward. Just maybe opening up a bit, little bit of space for Hughes there coming in from the wing. And let's play a little bit more direct, actually. Now we've got three strikers on the field. Let's go into them a little bit more directly. It's a tough opening game of the season. I'm disappointed that we haven't had a better start. But at the same time, I think you've got to recognise we're playing one of the teams that's come down from League Two. We probably shouldn't be making any judgments just yet. We shouldn't be too hard on ourselves. But we haven't looked great, have we? Um, we've given away a penalty. No, we haven't. Staunton with a very risky challenge there, but it's coming straight back. And Hurst is in, and he has finished it off. Ugh. All of my optimism from pre-season thrown out of the window. A lot of travelling fans in the stadium there as well. And Gloucester have done it to us as, again, haven't they? Oh, what a disappointment. What a disappointment. And probably everything hung on that Martinez mistake at the start of the second half. Maybe we would have had a bit more of a chance had that not, had that not happened so early on in the second half. I'm trying to remain optimistic here. I'm trying not to be too pessimistic after just one game as Price forces a save out of Gcock. Price has had a really poor game as well, a 6.1 for him. He's had a poor pre-season as well. He has not scored in pre-season, but... And, oh my goodness. Oh dear, and Reed, our new goalkeeper, has also had a shocking debut. 6.3 for him. And we've been torn open. You have to say really easily there. And Reed has got his position in all wrong. 4-0. That is a really poor start, isn't it? Oh, I'm devastated. We've been so good in pre-season. I don't like what I saw. Fortunately, the players respond to that. Recognise that that was not good enough. But it's just one game. Can't let's. Let's keep the PMA, positive mental attitude. Oh dear. If you can dream it, you can you can do it. Things have things can only get better after that, can't they? Come on, let's just recognise that Gloucester away is one of the hardest games that we are gonna play all season. Let's not be too down. I'm going to leave it there as we have our traditional media reaction loop. I'm going to leave it there. I will be back in a few days time. I think we've got uh, four days. So we've got three days rest before we head into AFC Filed at home. Hopefully we can do much better. See you in just a little while for that second game of the season. We're here ready to go against AFC Filed at home. Hopefully we can get our season up and running here. Um, before we do that, we are getting into uh, the FA Cup fourth qualifying round. We've been drawn at home against Chesham United. They're 21st in the Isthmian League. And so I really feel like we have to win that. There's no excuses. We have to win that and get to the first round. And hopefully this season we can have a decent uh, cup run, either a first round away tie against a big League One club, or if not, get some winnable games and maybe go 
some way to get in towards the third round again, as we did a few seasons back. Um, we really need to get some big money in this season. And at Sixfield Stadium, we are fortunate that we've got a stadium that's big enough that if we fill it, we get some decent money out of it. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed. But first, we've got to get that job done against Chesham United. Let's get into AFC Filed here. We're still a day away. Um, yeah, maybe I've, I've come back to you a little bit early. Um, they are second, you can see. They have had a good start to the season. Obviously, we have not. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident. I really do believe in this squad. We've had a, a great pre-season. I just feel like playing a tough side a tough side away from home in the opening game maybe just skews the perception of how we've started it looks bad losing four away but i think there are not going to be many games as that we'll face this season and i know i'm completely changing my tune now because i started off against gloucester saying that i thought they weren't as good as before and we could probably compete with them but um yeah, I'm, I, I've got, I've got to look for the silver lining, haven't I? Um, the, I, I just don't want another season like we've had uh, the last two, where we've been really inconsistent, where we've lost form. How good is Tony Whelan? He's a player that's available on loan. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be worried about bringing Tony Whelan in. Um, you can see, I mean, I'm still just. Uh, scouting lots and lots of players uh ellis chapman looks good doesn't he uh let's have a look is he available on loan no he's not so forget about ellis chapman he is clearly above vanarama national league standard um yeah i mean i'm still not adverse to bringing some more players in i actually found a fantastic I don't know if cheat's the word, but it's something I didn't know about before. I don't know if you guys know about this. But um, obviously we were way, way, way over the wage budget in pre-season. When I was offering contracts to unattached players, the board wouldn't even entertain it. I had no budget to offer them. But then I noticed that if I bring a player in on trial and he's in at the club on trial, I'm there able to offer him uh, a, a part-time contract um, a that he is looking for which is a real game changer uh, I had no idea that was possible even though we're way over the wage budget that's why I've been able to make so many signings in pre-season are, are available to me if I at first get them in on trial I Well, okay, he's come in. We've had a look at him. We know us, so we'll make the money available. And uh, that is, as I say, that is a real game changer, which I was not aware of. And it means we can be struggling to meet the wage budget, but still have that little bit of flexibility to improve the squad. And um, yeah, this is the other thing I wanted to talk about. I've done everything that seems possible to take off the, the the regional national leagues from the database. Let's have a look at this right now. Uh, add or remove leagues. Now, if I look here, you can see I've got these, I've got these uh, these leagues here. Look, remove division from nation. I click on it and I can't do anything with it. I can only switch it to playable or playable and view only below. So. Although I'm clicking, I'm not able to get rid of them. I have no idea what I'm doing wrong. But now that we're seven seasons in and we've got all those regional national leagues and the Vanarama North and South all have seven years of data attached to them. Not all the time, but at times it is really slowing down the game, as you can see from what we've been doing here. Um, it's very, very frustrating because I keep trying to get rid of them and they're still there at the start of next season. I, it does not give me the option to fully remove them, which is really, really frustrating. 
Um, I've got to see. I've got to see what I do about that. I don't know if anybody knows maybe what it is I'm doing wrong, but um, yeah, it would be nice to get rid of them. Um, so transfer list Gary Roberts to ease the way ease the wage bill concerns. Look, yes, George Lloyd. His asking price attracting interest. I want to attract interest. I want to get his five hundred seventy five pounds a week off of the books. For goodness sake. All right, so you can see here we've got two more games. And I knew it was going to be a tough start, but um, we need to get something out of these two. If we can beat AFC Fylde at home and then take points from Hereford away, that then kind of recovers us from the, the Gloucester defeat. It kind of makes things not look not quite so bad as they did. So here we go. So AFC Fylde have won. The one their opening game, they've got a goal difference of plus three, so they are full of confidence. We are obviously right down the bottom of the table with a 4 0 defeat, and they have Ashley Seal, Benny Ashley Seal, who has given us nightmares on previous occasions. I want to say he was previously at Telford, I think that's right. So the players are pretty much recovered here. We do have that Hereford game away in a few days, though. Um, I think what I might do is change out Staunton for Sam Ling and Mikhail here is on international duty. So I'm going to bring Staunton back in there on the bench. And um, yeah, so he is our defensive option. Sharif can play right back or defensive midfield. Apart from that, I'm not going to change anything, I don't think. I want to give this team its chance, give it its opportunity like I say, I think um, judging them on a poor performance against Gloucester is not really fair. I think um, we'll know much more about how capable we are of competing with the top teams after today's game. AFC filed, we had, we've had we had decent results against them the last couple of seasons. So uh, I've, I've got to try and be confident. And... Uh, Let's let's see what they can do with home advantage. Um, yeah, I I expect to see a much better performance. What do I what tone do I need to pick to get that? There we go. Um, let's see. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm going to trust Tommy Reading. Go. I'm going to trust Martinez at the back. The only thing I'm going to do here is move Duffus to mark their left winger when we lose the ball. I'm not going to make any other changes. Let's try and get a performance in line with what we saw against good teams in pre-season and really kick our season off here. Let's really try and go for it. Another slow start. We've got 60% possession and they get the first highlight. This time headed away, not conceding from the corner like we did against Gloucester. And Gibbs is forward here. Our top assist of the last two seasons. Was that not a foul? Martinez wins it back nicely. And we are straight in with Duffus. Ah, oh, and he's hit the post. Gibbs just threaded him through beautifully. And in theory, that is Duffus's game right there. Put the ball in front of him. Let him run. And finish off the chance. Now, Ling has taken a knock. Let's make a change here. Um... I think we can make a quick change here. Um, there we go. Substitute off. Let's bring on Josh Staunton. Or do I maybe give Lamine Sharif his debut? I'm going to bring Sharif in. See what he can do. And we've had a good start, haven't we? Um, five shots, two on target. But so far, only the one highlight. Let's demand more here. We've got possession, but it's back in our own half. We really don't want to lose it here. Hodgin, who also needs a much better game today. He's playing well so far. And a good little spell of possession, even though we're not doing anything with it. Can we just move this ball forward and create an opportunity? Amupong on a booking. Got to be worried about that as well. We've still got the ball. We've been very patient with it. I'm really trying to build up here as Duffus gets it on the right wing. 
He's not really a crosser of the ball, and you can see why there, but he has forced the defender into a mistake, which has given us the penalty. And James Price, top scorer. He was third top scorer in the Vanarama National League last season. He's got his season up and running from the penalty spot. Didn't score in pre-season. He's been poor in pre-season like he was last season, but he ended up, of course, scoring 22 goals last season. Third top scorer in the league. I'm going to praise the players, even though I haven't seen the outcome of this highlight. Gibbs getting hold of it there. Back to Sharif. Back to Armstrong. And no, sorry. Armstrong, I don't even have a player called Armstrong. Agyapong scores his first Russian and Diamonds goal. The ex-Manchester United trainee. I think he's going to be a great player for us. And Sharif, with his midfield instincts, getting involved there on the edge of the box. And Agyapong has made it 2-0. And this is... This is more what I was hoping for, more what I was expecting. And we've got a corner to end the first half. We could even make it more emphatic. And it's headed over by Gibson. So Gibson, we don't have a Gibson either. We've got a Gibson and a Wilson, but we don't have a Gibson. Oh man, my, my, my memory for my players' names is absolutely terrible. It's quite worrying actually. When you get to a certain age, you start really struggling with names and it really makes you worried about your future. Um, things are going well, but no, you can't look a little bit better. No, I'm going to tell them I'm very happy with the way things are going. And um, do I make a change with Samuel Ag Agupong being on a booking? I think I'm going to make that change. I'm going to bring on. What change do I want to make here? Do you know what? I think I'm going to bring on Staunton. Move Staunton to right back and Sharif to the midfield position. Um, I think that's a decent enough change. The only worrying thing now is, of course, I've made two changes. I've only got one substitute left and I've got a number of players who are getting pretty tired. Sheringham is tired. Uh, Gibbs is tired. I think one of those two is going to have to be the change. Wilson is also tired and on a booking. I'm concerned about that Hereford away game. Let's praise the players again. Just want to try and keep confidence way up for the rest of this game. Sheringham into Hodging. Who am I going to change off? Sheringham or Gibbs? Hodging, he can't get a cross in. He's still working it around there. Back to Sheringham. For some reason, back to Hodging. And Doofus at the back post sets up Lamine Sharif. And this one is over and... If we were in despair at the end of the Gloucester game, I think there's every reason to be optimistic again after this performance. Absolutely superb. Sharif on the volley, nodded down. I'll call you Duffus after that one rather than Doofus. Got to be happy there. And my praising the players turned out to be a decent move there as they slotted away a third goal. And really, I would like to see us carry on dominating here and keep that clean sheet as Price sets Duffus away. Can he finish? He can't, but he can cross in. And James Price heads in for his second of the season. It says he's third there. Heads in for his second of the season. And we have cancelled out that 4-0 defeat on the opening day in one foul swoop against one of the teams that we would expect to be going for promotion this year. So this is a superb performance. Delighted. Absolutely delighted. Let's make our last change. Sheringham is shattered. But you know what? I think for the next game, Sharif can start as the defensive midfielder. So I think I'm going to give Gibbs a rest. And I'm going to... What change do I want to make here? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Jack Sparks in. For his first game of the season. Play him as a winger. And. Hodging is more than capable of playing. In that playmate. Do you know what? I'm going to make him a shadow striker. I think he can do that. I'm going to see how that goes. I think 4-0 up. With 25 minutes to play. I think it's a nice little opportunity to. Experiment with Hodging's role there. I think he is more than capable. With his finishing ability. And athletic ability. Even if he's not the quickest. I think to come in with some runs from deep 
as a second striker, as a support striker, shadow striker. There you go. It took me three attempts, but I got the role right in the end. Let's tell the players we are pleased again. We have had a lot of bookings as well. Let's just... Um, I know it's the 88th minute. It's a bit late now, but I'll take get stuck in off just to not run the risk of a red card, hopefully, at the end of the game. A lot of bookings today, but an exceptional performance. And there you go. If you thought we were in for another disastrous season after the Gloucester game, I think we can be more than optimistic after putting in a performance like that against a very good AFC filed side. Straight up from 22nd to 9th in one foul swoop there. And Gloucester have won their two opening games, as have Yeovil. So um, we'll see. Oh, my goodness. Straight away, Sam Ling out for two months. That's disappointing, isn't it? Um, but we do have players that can cover. Um, so there we go. I think um, looking at the schedule, I mean, there's lots of opportunities of when we want to come back because we've got such a tough start to the season. I think what I would probably like to do is maybe come back for, hopefully we get to the FA Cup first round. So maybe we'll come back for the FA Cup first round and do a double header. I think the FA Cup first round is going to be in here somewhere. So maybe we could do Kings Lynn and the FA Cup first round. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, really, really pleased with that start. Really pleased, even losing the first game 4-0. I think the second game was that good that we can be optimistic about what we can do this season, at the very least playing at home. So, yeah, happy with that. We will see you back for probably an FA Cup first round and Kings Lynn doubleheader, perhaps. So, um, yeah, good one. Good, good first win of the season. No doubt about that. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this uh, part one and part two of today's episode, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you for the next one here on Dog Turds Into Diamonds. Bye for now, guys.